The Hermit is an incredibly cozy solo bunker base that can tank 23 rockets in an offline raid, and it's super easy to build. There are no buildouts to make this bunker, and there's no chance it'll ever get patched. The Hermit will even work perfectly on console rust. So if you're ready to stop losing your loot to offline raiders, and also enjoy a spacious, no compromise solo dream base, the Hermit is for you. As you can see, the build cost and upkeep is incredibly affordable, so anybody can build this base. Now let's take a look around the last base you'll ever need to learn. We'll start off the tour by looking at the single door airlock that has a retake peek into it. This will prevent people from going deep, and if they try, you'll have a way to retake it. We have a couple more windows here to give you great visibility on the front side of your base. Off to the right of this door, we have a shotgun trap, and then above the door, we have another one to surprise anybody going through the door path. If we pull this window off, we can use the retake into our front airlock. There are also a couple boxes here to help out with any components you might need while crafting. Right here, we've got the entrance to our bunker, but first we'll head into our main living space where we'll see 10 large boxes worth of frontier barrels, six electric furnaces, and three normal furnaces. We also have a bed as a respawn here, and heading up our jump up to our second floor, we can see another bedroom with a couple of peaks outside the back of your base. This isn't meant to be a shooting floor, but it's better than having absolutely nothing. We have a battery right here that can power any auto turrets, as well as the electric furnaces or any lights. And then we can head out another single door airlock with a shotgun trap onto our roof. This just gives you a quick way to jump up to your power source, whether they're solar panels or a wind turbine. Next, we'll want to take a look at the bunker. So we'll head back in our front door and make our way over there. This base uses a completely standard stability bunker, but I've solved the two problems that you typically have with them. There are no soft sides and no exposed high foundations from the outside. Side. Simply spawn on your bag inside the bunker and chop out the wooden half wall. And just like that, your bunker is wide open. This makes it super accessible and easy to get to while you're playing. But a full 23 rockets when you go offline. And if we pick up the window embrasure and the glass window over the TC, you can see our upkeep is super, super cheap. That means you can toss a bunch of upkeep in it and not have to worry about checking it constantly or spending a ton of time farming the resources for it. It's super easy to seal as well. Just place a twig or a wooden half wall right here and then a floor tile that's upgraded to armor. And that's it. So if you're ready to learn the last solo base you'll ever need, make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And we're ready to get right into the build. We'll start off by placing a one by one with a triangle off of it. We can then wall in the triangle and place our TC right here. Just make sure it's not too close to the line or too far away from it. We'll place a wall to the side of it and then do two half walls here where the bottom one is just wood. This will be our bunker entrance eventually. For now, we'll put a wooden single door frame on this side of the base as well, and then we'll build an airlock off of it. Just make sure to keep both of the single door frames in wood so we can machete them out later. We'll progress past these being wooden super quick, so don't worry about it. It'll only be a few minutes like this. I'm placing my bag in the airlock, but you can place it inside if you change the layout a little bit. I'm putting two of the frontier barrels right here, so we have two large boxes. And then I'm putting my tier one workbench on this wood wall. We can place a furnace next to it and a couple of small boxes here. Lastly, we can place a campfire there just to cook food in the early game. And that's basically it for the early starter. It's only a couple stone nodes to progress to the next point, so we'll make sure to get that done as soon as possible, just so we're not susceptible to Molotov raids. Now, I promised you a build-out free bunker, and this is as easy as it gets. We'll place a low triangle here, and then two high triangles next to it. And our bunker is complete. To seal the bunker, we can just place a triangle floor right here. And then to reopen it, we would just chop this wooden half wall out, and it'll break. One thing to note is that these two foundations are soft-sidable, so I'm going to upgrade them to sheet metal right now. But they will get upgraded to HQM later. They'll also be enclosed, so they're not soft-sidable. Next, we'll place a few half walls right here, and then a window frame on the left, and a single door frame on the right. We'll wall in the other two sides, put a ceiling on it, and then a double door frame. At this really early stage, you'll just want to make sure that you never use this double door as a way in or out of the base because there's no airlock on it and your bunker could be open. This isn't a problem later on, it's just for this point in the progression. I sealed up the top of this one foundation, but I'm leaving the other one open so it can act as a jump up until we get the ladder BP. And to give us a new way into our front entrance, I'm just going to place a wooden foundation here. Now the core of our base is looking a little lopsided, so I'm going to go ahead and add a honeycomb to the other side to even it out. It's easiest at this point to upgrade the foundation to armored where the TC is. And once that's done, we can go ahead and honeycomb both sides of it. We can upgrade these top ceiling tiles for now to sheet metal. 
and make sure to get this half wall as well. If we head onto the inside of our base by just going through our starter airlock, we can chop out that wooden half wall and pick up our furnace. And now we have a functional entrance to our bunker. Again, just make sure you're not using that double door on the back of the base, but rather put another double door frame down to create an airlock in the front. At this point, we want to use this as the main entrance to our base so it's not susceptible to Molotov rating. So we'll head over to our starter airlock where we did the single doors in wood here and we'll just begin macheting these out. It's super cheap and requires no blueprints and honestly only takes a few seconds. Right as the wall is about to break, make sure you pick up your doors so you're not being wasteful. We can then go ahead and pick up this bag and replace the wall. We'll do the same on the other door frame as well so we have a fully honeycomb side of the base. Make sure that you replace down your bag inside the core right here, because you will need this to spawn in the bunker and open it up. At this point, we have no wooden parts of the base, so we're not susceptible to flame raiding at all. And we have our fully functional bunker that when we seal, we'll take eight rockets to raid. So if you need to log off anytime in the early game, you can do so. Next, we'll build out our main living space, but we'll actually start with our airlock. Head over to this temporary wood foundation and upgrade it. If the terrain doesn't allow for high foundations, you can always place some lower like this and just half wall them in. You could even put some furnaces there or something if you want. Next, we'll place a couple of window frames here and a single door frame. Half wall the top of it to match the height of the base and put a ceiling on all of it. We'll put a ceiling on this level too, which will hold some drop boxes. Putting a half wall here to separate the drop box section from the single door. Finish off our single door airlock and then add a double door frame as well. And finally, we'll add in all of the deployables in this section. If you don't have the window BP yet, you can always just use window bars. I like to add a shotgun trap into the single door frame as well, so then if anybody's going through your door path, it's just probably something that they won't see. Next, I'll place a piece of twig right here and place a couple drop boxes, just so we have some drop storage in the early game here. Overall, our airlock is looking pretty good, but depending on the terrain, it might be difficult to make this jump. So if you need a little bit of help, the stone barricade is a perfect deployable that doesn't require a blueprint and is only 100 stone to craft. If you guys are liking the video, please make sure that you drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel. 90% of you guys aren't sub and I really appreciate it. For this next part, we're going to expand the second floor. So make sure that you seal up your bunker before using this double door. Expanding this floor couldn't be any easier. You just wall in the entire perimeter. We'll put a ceiling on all of it except for the one triangle that's going to be used as a jump up to our bedroom floor. On that triangle, we can build a standard jump up. You can build a half height shelf on the bottom as a jump up, but I prefer using a couple furnaces. At this point, you're probably itching for a little bit more storage space as well, so we'll build out this 10 box loot room using the frontier barrels. If you don't have that DLC, you can just use large boxes and small boxes in here as well. And keep in mind this shelf can be stone or it can be wood, it really doesn't matter. Honestly, the Frontier Barrel DLC is kind of overpowered. The fact that you can fit 10 large boxes in a triangle loot room like this is pretty wild. In our last triangle, we'll place a half height shelf that we'll put six electric furnaces on. These things are crazy overpowered, and if you haven't used them before, you definitely should. At the end of this video, I also have an electricity guide that shows how to wire these up, as well as a couple of auto turrets. The nice part is you can fully automate these, and as a solo, you don't need any large furnaces when you have a system like this. Lastly, when you get the bed BP, make sure you place one down in here. This will significantly cut down your respawn time and let you get back into the fight faster. We want to make sure the other foundation here isn't soft sidable, so we'll go ahead and enclose it like this, which also gives us a platform to place down either a tier 3 or a tier 2 workbench. This is also a great spot for a shotgun trap for that main entrance and after we get that down we can go ahead and pick up any remaining double doors and place garage doors down on those sockets. If you don't have garage doors yet that's totally fine just go at your own pace. You can also place down a triangle floor frame here it just helps with mobility a little bit crossing from this section into the main living space. It's probably not a great idea to have a garage door as the very last door on this before you have your third floor up. So maybe put a double door there instead. But anyways, your base is coming along great, so let's get right into the next section.
We'll start off upgrading our core by spawning in our bunker and chopping out the half wall that opens it up. We can then pick up all of the deployables except for our bags. This is a great time to upgrade our TC compartment to armored as well because we won't be able to reach these after the vending machines are down. The ceiling tiles you can do at any time though. We'll upgrade the window frame to sheet metal and then the rest of the bunker to armored as well. The grade of this low triangle foundation doesn't matter, it could literally not even be there. But the two high foundations for the bunker should be armored. After we've made sure that we picked up that window, we can place down two vending machines, making sure they're rotated towards us. They have to be all the way up against the window frame, and there has to be a gap in the middle that you can reach the TC from. Before placing the second one, just make sure that you can reach it. Also disable broadcasting so you're not showing the whole map where your loot is. We can place a couple of frontier barrels, but if you try to place them from the side like this, they won't fit. So the easiest way that I've found is to line yourself up like this and place the first one. Then we can stand on the first one and place the second. Just make sure that you can place this half wall here. If you're looking for a little bit more loot storage in your main bunker, take advantage of drop boxes. They're super cheap and they only take up space on a wall. For the one that goes on the half wall, make sure you place it on the outside so the bulk of it isn't inside of the bunker. This will just save you a little bit of space. And it also makes it a little easier to just walk across the top of the bunker here. Next, I'll start upgrading everything to its final grade. These two high foundations and our airlock get upgraded because they border the high foundations of our bunker. We'll also place these square foundations with roof tiles off of them to cover the sides of our high foundations. This will ensure that we're 23 rockets from every side. After we've done that, we can head inside to upgrade the half height sections that prevent people from soft siding our bunker foundations. You can do these entirely in sheet metal. And we can go ahead and place a ladder here whenever we get the blueprints. This will make getting in and out of our bunkers super easy. Most of our main floor will actually stay stone, which keeps it nice and cheap. We will upgrade this triangle in this square, though. We can then head up and upgrade all of the ceiling tiles over this main loot room. And we'll make sure to upgrade all of the tops of the honeycomb here. At this point, we can upgrade this main loot room to sheet metal. You shouldn't store your super important loot in there. Just use it for components, prim kits, or anything that you kind of need quick access to. But definitely don't log off with your rockets in there. Now we'll go ahead and upgrade all of the bottom floor honeycomb, making sure to get these foundations. And this right here will bring our bunker up to a full 23 rocket rate. Also, this base is super small and cheap, so if you're a Giga Chad and you've just got a bunch of metal frags, feel free to upgrade the whole thing. There's really no reason by the end of wipe that anything on this base could be stone. The bunker and the main floor are looking great but that roof is uh looking a little bare let's start by heading up to our roof place a couple of window frames right here and then wall in this triangle create an airlock on this side and we'll go ahead and just put a ceiling on the whole thing we can put some windows with window embrasures on each of the window frames window 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 window. My brain is deep fried. Anyways, get that single door airlock on there as well, and then this triangle will be used as a large battery compartment, and it'll also hold all of our electronics. I have a guide at the end of this video to show you how to wire up a power source to the battery, and then the battery to a couple of turrets, as well as all of the electric furnaces shown below. To finish up our bedroom in here, we'll place down a box or a frontier barrel, and then a bed to respawn on. We can also put something on this half height shelf. And look at that, we have another respawn, a battery compartment, and a safe airlocked way out onto our roof. Speaking of the roof, that thing looks like shit. But it's a super easy fix, so we'll head over here and then place some roof tiles like this. I'm just doing them in wood because they're really just for decoration, to be honest. Place a couple low walls here that give you a little bit of extra cover on the roof. We can then make our way up one of those roof tiles onto the very tippy top of the base and just place some low walls here. If you're in the early game and just using solar panels as a power source, this just kind of hides them a little bit and makes it so they can't be seen from the ground. Look at you go. You've moved on from caveman to big brain electronic man. I love that for you. When you're ready for it, you can replace these solar panels with a wind turbine though. That way you're generating power all through the night instead of relying on just the solar panels during the day. 
Hey, yo, an unadvertised optional compound? You'll even be able to bring a horse into this compound. That's a feature. Build two squares off of your main entrance and then throw a couple triangles off either side. This is going to be a pretty bog standard gatehouse with Patrico peaks. So just get a ceiling on that, John, and then build up those Patricos like usual. You can place some double door frames here and then half wall the top so we can build up a couple turret pods. And yes, the electricity section of this video accounts for these. Placing these additional double door frames here will allow you to get really good chain link protection for these turrets. It's also what reconnects this gatehouse back to the main base. So build your little turret pods up top, slap some turrets in those bad boys and get your chain link on. I like to upgrade these to a building skin just so they have a little bit smaller hitbox. And we'll finish building out the deployables on the inside of the gatehouse. I like to put small boxes in front of the Patrico peaks because they put you at the perfect height to crouch peak. You can also fit an additional bed in here that doesn't obstruct the single door at all. And you have built yourself a nice looking functional gatehouse. It provides a little bit of turret coverage to your front entrance. We'll finish up the gatehouse by placing some twig right here and then placing our final barricades. Alright, now check this out. We're going to head to the back side of the base where you can see it's entirely flat. If you use a wooden gate and face it towards the base like this, it creates a perfect airlock. This means you can actually bring things like horses into your compound because who doesn't want to have a horse party in their compound? That's why every solo plays Rust. Oh, and plus, with the metal detector update, you're going to be able to sit out there, feed your horse, and metal detect in peace. <laughs> what a game. The wall placement isn't super precise here, it just takes four walls per side, and I like to start by attaching one to the gatehouse and one to the gate, then just kind of snapping the two in the middle together. And honestly, it looks pretty cool for a quick little cheap compound you can slap onto your base, and having that gate on the back actually is super useful. But now let's take a look at the electricity system for the base. Alright, we have a super simple setup here, basically a large battery, four branches, and a couple of splitters here. First, we've got the power source that goes into the battery, which in this case is a wind turbine, and it just goes into the input. The output of the battery heads into that first branch, and then each of these four branches are set to 10 power. The output of this branch goes to one of the auto turrets on the gatehouse. Then the remaining power goes to the next branch. The output of this branch goes to the other gatehouse turret. And then the remaining power goes to the next branch. The output of this branch goes into the first splitter, which splits into each of the three furnaces. Some people will say use branches for everything, and they're wrong. Branches consume whatever power they're set to all the time, meaning they're draining your battery even if those electric furnaces are off. Splitters, on the other hand, don't do that. The remaining power of this branch goes into the next one, and then just like the one before it, this one goes into the second splitter that splits out into the next three furnaces. This gives you two auto turrets and six furnaces worth of power, and you can easily add another branch to that if you need to power anything else. This super Super simple electric system will get you up and rolling and if you made it this far in the video i love you i appreciate you please drop a sub and like the video and i'll see you guys in the next one